For today's lesson, I'm going to be introducing the reactivity of the periodic table. Reactivity is how easily an atom undergoes a chemical reaction or how it acts when it is combined with another atom. Let's take a look at two atoms. We have Na or sodium and Cl which is chlorine. When the two atoms bond or combine, they are going to form salt or sodium chloride. But why does sodium chlorine make salt? If we look at sodium, it is going to be in group 1 on the periodic table. Chlorine is in group 17. Atoms from group 1 and group 17 are highly reactive together, meaning that they come together to form compounds and molecules quite easily. The most important thing to remember about reactivity is that an atom reactivity is going to be determined by the number of valence electrons that it has. Therefore, the group that it is in is going to be more important than the period. Let's look at the reactivity of groups on the periodic table. First up is group 1, which goes from hydrogen to francium. This group is going to be highly reactive. Group 17 on the right side of the periodic table, which goes from fluorine to tinnosine, is also going to have high reactivity. This means that the atoms found in these two groups are going to combine readily with one another to form stable compounds. As we work our way inwards, the reactivity on the periodic table actually begins to decrease. So groups 2 and group 16 are going to be less reactive than groups 1 and group 17. Moving in farther, groups 3 through 15 are going to be even less reactive than groups 2 and group 6. Our final group on the periodic table, which is group 18, actually does not have any reactivity. We say that these atoms are going to be inert, or they do not react. They are going to be found stable on their own. Just to recap so far, we have groups 1, and group 17 with high reactivity. Groups 2 and group 16 have medium reactivity. Group 3 through 15 have low reactivity and group 18 has no reactivity. Reactivity is also going to change depending upon which period you are in or if you're a metal or a nonmetal. For our metals, francium, found in the lower left-hand corner of the periodic table, is going to have the highest reactivity of all the metals. Opposite of francium is going to be fluorine, and it is going to have the highest reactivity of your nonmetals. I always like to remember that the Fr and F are going to be your most reactive elements on the periodic table. Again, reactivity is going to be determined by your valence electrons. So if an atom has one or seven valence electrons, it is going to be highly reactive. Those atoms are found in groups one and 17. If an atom has two or six valence electrons, they are going to be slightly less reactive. If an atom has three to five valence electrons, it is going to be even less reactive. If the atom has a full shell of valence electrons, meaning it has eight or 18, it is actually going to have the lowest reactivity or almost no reactivity on the periodic table.